If your Dyson cordless vacuum cleaner is not picking up bits properly from the carpet or it's pulsing on and off when you press the trigger, there are certain things that you can check in order to stop that from happening. The first thing that you should always check with these vacuums is a filter and you should take it out and clean it and 9 times out of 10 that will solve all your problems. In this video I'll show you how to do that and I'll also show you other steps that you can take if you find that your vacuum is not performing the way you expect it to to try and solve the problem. So in the video I'll also include a complete strip down and clean of the unit itself. So the first thing that should be checked when this thing isn't performing properly is the filter that just pulls out and as you can see that filter needs a clean but it's not too bad and you can actually wash that under the tap with a bit of soapy water give it a good rinse and then I usually dry it with a hair dryer so as you can probably tell I've jumped forward in the video a bit now but I've just cleaned this and I just wanted to show you something that you need to be aware of this thing comes apart so if you just push the top there you can take the actual filter off the bottom of this and then this mesh comes out and you should always clean inside there because quite often when you're cleaning these filters there's dust and fluff inside the center there now the filter should always be your first point of call before you actually go for any further intervention to try and make the vacuum work better so the next thing to check is a motorized head it unlocks like this just take this plate off and as you can see there's all sorts of dirt and stuff in either side there that's a little channel that the air goes through to suck the debris up from the carpet so if that's blocked it's not going to perform very well you need to clear all the stuff out of there and you know it's inevitable that you're going to get all this sort of stuff wrapped around this head the ruler just comes off by turning this at the end look and then it just pushes out I've given it a reasonable clean in there. I just used a spray and a little uh, scratch it pad just to get in all the gaps. I never soaked it because there's a motor there and you need to be really careful. So just clean it carefully and that, my advice would be to let it dry completely before you use it. But as you can see I've got all of the stuff out and this is what actually came off the roller and out of the attachment. So all this stuff is going to affect how well this thing vacuums. Especially things like this that were wrapped around the bearing on the end where the uh, shaft spins for this brush. So things like that will slow it down and it will not be as effective. So you need to clear it all out and I'll put it back together again now which is really simple. This end goes in the end there with the drive shaft on it so that just pushes through into there. Push down with the screwdriver click it until it's locked you can see that this grey thing locks into there so put this in at an angle like this and the lug will locate push it down and then use your screwdriver to lock it and then that's completed now so if your vacuum is still not working properly you're going to need to strip down and clean the cyclone assembly so once you've opened the lid push this red button all the way to the bottom and if you watch the bin it just flips out away from the battery there and then it's just a case of jiggling it around and pulling it away from the actual assembly itself so the next thing to do is to remove this this mesh here that goes around the outside and to do that you need an object that can get between the vacuum be careful if, if you're using a knife like me you can use a flat tool if you can find one and just prise it off as you're going around now when I was doing this earlier on it was like clicking back in again so you need to kind of keep it pulled away as you prise it and it, you kind of get your tool behind it and flick it out as if so you're giving it that sort of motion to get the thing out there we go unfortunately Dyson being the wonderful company that they are they don't want you to be servicing these vacuums so so to make life difficult for you they've used screws that have got this type of head on and this one is a T8 head so it's a T8 bit that you need you might actually be able to use a very small flat screwdriver so that's two three four now the last one yeah so that's all five screws out so then we can pull this off I'll vacuum this out next
So that's just basically to get the thick off. Now, this just pulls out and that allows you to get in there and clean all of this stuff as well. So the next thing you do is you need to get in here with a stiff bristled brush again because there are more screws that need removing. And this is just to allow you to see where they are. So just there where my finger is, is one of the screws. It's not focused very well, but you might just be able to make out that it's one of the star-shaped ones again. And there are four of these to take out from what I can see. But I can't get this star-shaped bit in there because of all these nozzles and that. So I think personally that this flathead bit that goes in the same screwdriver will do the job. So we'll be able to see whether you can take this apart with a flat-headed screwdriver. And the answer to that is yes, it will work. One more. That's it, that's coped easily with that. You've got to get a set of long nose pliers in here. It's like a white plastic sear clip is the best way to describe what it's like. Long nose pliers in, squeeze it together. There we go. That just leaves two more screws. One there and one there to remove. And they're a different length to the other ones. This just pops apart. And all the cyclones come out. So basically now I'll vacuum all of this and then I'm going to actually wash them up with washing up liquid, give them a really good clean and then we'll put it back together again. The more things you need to be aware of, this centerpiece pulls out, look, and if it comes out it just slots back on, there's a groove, there's a groove there and it just slots back onto that there. So it's quite simple to return if you found that it's come off and you're not sure where it's come from. This needs to come off, now you'll notice that It'll only go on one way because there's a gap there, look, so this needs to come off. And then you can remove the cyclone assembly and that gives you a good chance of cleaning all up inside there. So that's the cyclone assembly fully stripped down. I'm going to clean everything and then we'll put it all back together again. So I've cleaned everything and all I did in reality was soak it all in a bowl of hot soapy water for about half an hour, give it a good shake around, slush it backwards and forwards and it came out like this. So I never actually used any implements to clean it at all, it just all came off with soapy water and I used a fair bit of liquid soap to do that. Then I've rinsed it and then I've dried it. So we're ready to reassemble everything. One thing that I never noticed when I took the thing apart was on this particular thing there is a gasket there. So the first thing that goes back in is this, it goes into this part here. It'll only go one way, it just pushes in like so. The next thing to go on is this rubber seal and that will only go on one way. And you've got to push it down over these little nozzles here. So go all the way around, push it down. This goes on next. It will only go on one way, so flip it upside down. And then this then goes on the top, like so. This had the smaller screws, all the other screws were the same size. It's one. So, so next we've got the four screws to go in. Now these are going to be quite difficult to do because you've got to get right down inside there to do that. Do the second one. I'll do it opposite where the first one was. So it's handy having a magnetic bit. There we go. Three. Three. 
for. So the next thing I'm going to do is fit this back onto the motor assembly and I'm just going to push that in and it's almost gone in, there's just this side I'll just use the needle nose pliers again there we go, that's snapped into place so next this bit has got to be pushed in and this is quite fiddly it will only go one way this rubber gasket has got to seal around all the nozzles and the screw holes have got to be lined up once that's in this goes on the top and it will only go one way like so and then we've got the five screws to put in five this has then got to be clipped on at that side there's like a little cutout that has got to go there look so I'll just line that up with that little indent and push it in that's it so to put the bin back on is quite simple if you slide the bin along locate the front end first in there and then just push it up so there we go that's an overhaul of a Dyson DC59 cordless vacuum cleaner at least you can take this apart give it a good clean out and you know you've done everything you can to try and get the vacuum back to optimal performance and it's not that difficult so I hope you found this useful and thank you for watching